greeting from trishla foundation welcome to our youtube channel of trishla foundation this channel is meant to spread awareness give lots of correct information scientifically based information to the parents to the worker who are working for the children with cerebral palsy we have started the webinar and uh, series of lectures on effect of aging in cerebral palsy individuals as you know that this everyone who ages the problem is start occurring after some age but in cerebral palsy as there is already lots of problem is there they are going to have a lots of more other problems at very very early age so every parents every individual has to understand what are the problem which is going to come in near future how they can prevent it in last two series two lectures we have taken about the general aspect the impact of aging on cerebral palsy how you can live good quality of life happy and smiling life now in this talk i will take you to journey of physical physical musculoskeletal problem in adult with cerebral palsy as you know that every individual is going to transition from childhood to adolescent then adult and transition into adult is totally different parameter especially in cerebral palsy because there can be change in body morphology change in muscle and bone status from adolescent to the adult there can be lots of emotional environmental factor will be there and because of they have already these tone abnormalities and other weakness in the muscle they can have decrease in the physical activity and lack of physical therapy can have deterioration on the musculoskeletal status of the any individual who is already affected by cerebral palsy how they are going to affect with age as you know that muscle become more tight and weak even in the general population but in cerebral palsy they already have their tightness will be much more and weakness will be much more because of that they will have decrease in flexibility limited muscle strength limited endurance and restricted movement in the joints and in dystonia the jerky movement will have a lots of bad effect on the joints this individual will do lots of energy expenditure three to four, five times more than the normal individuals they will feel difficulty to perform task and take longer time in performing same activity as per normal persons they will have frequent episode of fatigues because of all this factor they will have reduced energy level in their body they can go in chronic fatigue we can prevent it we can delay it we can manage it they will have decline in the fine motor control they will have less efficient motor control postural instabilities their spasticity and shortening of the muscle will increase and ultimately they can have the muscle sore they can have pain in the muscle and joints in long term they will develop osteoarthritis osteoporosis vitamin d deficiencies and because of that they can have joint pain and discomforts they already have sarcopenia and muscle weakness that can increase in very very rapid speed if they are not managing by the physical exercise and gym these individual can have early degenerative arthritis because there will be more mechanical malalignments and more counter active pressure over the joints because of that they can have developed the arthritis at very early age all this factor can lead to the premature aging that means people with cerebral palsy are likely to have experience premature aging around the 40 year age usually the aging process start in normal individual around 55 to 60 years post impairment syndrome that is a combination of pain fatigue weakness and if you are using the joint repeatedly they can have overuse syndromes if they are very very active and physical limitation is there and in the end they can have a lot of loss of stamina loss of physical functioning if they are not taking care of the diet exercises they can have obesities they will have 
bad impact on the muscle and bone joints they will <coughs> may be more support of walking during the walking and standing they can have fracture with trivial trauma because of the osteoporosis and vitamin d deficiencies in dystonia because of jerky movement is there they can have nerve entrapments and ultimately cervical myelopathy is a common problem in generalized dystonia because there are lots of jerky movement of the knee muscles now we will discuss about the premature aging the premature aging or happen because of due to extra strain and stress on the body cardiovascular pulmonary system they have to work hard in this individual degenerative changes will start in the joint in very early their muscle will be more tightness more weakness energy expenditure increase in the imbalance cause early fatigue and ultimately they will have more pain difficulty in walking increased risk of recurrent fall early fatigue in post impairment syndrome usually occur in adults with cerebral palsy it is a combination of system symptom like pain fatigue weakness depression resulting from high energy demand of limb with cerebral palsy because normal individual can manage all the requirements but in cerebral palsy daily routine activities they can have lots of pressure on the body and persistent of all these issues for long duration will place great burden on the body we can prevent it by therapy treatment modalities meditation yoga exercises now come to the common problem in cerebral palsy that is the vitamin d deficiency in children it is known as the rickets in adult adolescent and adult known as osteomalacia why it happen it happen because most of the time adult or children even with cerebral palsy they remain inside the home and vitamin d came from the sunlight they are not getting sufficient exposure to good quality sunlight without pollution in afternoon time so some of them are also on anti convulsion treatments they decrease the vitamin d deficiency because of vitamin d deficiency they will have proper muscle weakness that is pain in the thigh muscles shoulder muscle pelvic girdle muscle they can have fatigue even in long term they can have fracture decrease in the functional activity and if really it is not managed they can have deteriorations you can see this i have given the link also i have given the uh, barcode there you can get the full lecture on vitamin deficiency in normal and physical disabled individuals you can go through and have a knowledge about the vitamin d deficiency role in the adult with cerebral palsy as i told you vitamin d deficiency causes i already told because of vitamin d deficiency in the body you can have a less immunities if you are diabetic blood sugar can be uncontrolled vitamin d deficiency you can have a fracture muscle weakness chances of the cancer is more skin diseases are becoming more hypertension kidney disease and chances of infection are much more even mental stresses are very very common in vitamin d deficiency so urti fatigue depression wound healing hair loss can occur in bone as i told you fracture can occur even in cardiovascular disease you are pre-existing the death rate is very very high and older individual quality impairment can be there and in children asthma can be precipitated how you can prevent it you can prevent it by taking the proper sun exposure proper fortified food but usually it is very very less available if you are lacking the vitamin d you are thinking that we are not getting sufficient vitamin d you have to take supplement normal requirement is 400 to 600 minimum in children and adolescent in adults 600 to 800 and if there is deficiency is there you can add up with higher doses vitamin d 60000 uh, weekly or 
once in a two week depending on the requirement as per doctor uh, prescriptions but beforehand you can have vitamin D check in the blood so that you can know how much vitamin D deficiency is there so that proper supplement proper treatment of vitamin D deficiency are very very common it should be done now we will discuss about the osteoporosis and disc fracture why it is very important because cerebral palsy individual have a very very uh, high risk of getting the fracture because of osteoporosis bone strength deficit in non ambulatory cerebral palsy individual the children adult who are not able to walk it is 3 to 4 time more common in compared to the adult with spinal cord injuries and 15 time more than the strength deficit in adult with strokes and as the total ratio if we are taking incidence of bone fracture in children with severe form of cerebral palsy 7 to 9.7 percent so it is very important to identify prevent it and treat it children with cerebral palsy have accumulated risk of 38 percent of sustaining a fracture up to the 16 year age that means the in 100 cases of severe cerebral palsy up to the 16 year age the 38 person 3.8 in the 10 children can get the fracture at any time and fracture of bones was seven time higher common in 15 year age in children with comorbid diagnosis of epilepsy that means if your child have epilepsy then without epilepsy in comparison the seven time more chances of fracture is there with epilepsy fracture of upper extremity upper limb are most prevalent the children are walking standing doing activities but if they are really they are not able to stand and walk the lower limb fracture are very common in that lower part of femur is very very common and you also know that most of the cerebral palsy individual already thin from birth onward so who begin with thin bone is at greater risk of fracture overall is very very bad scenario with cerebral palsy individual who do not walk and other finding is that bone quality in adult to and old is depends upon quality of calcium storage in bone achieved in childhood and early adult life So whatever we take in the food, that calcium will be stored and bone will be stronger till the age of 25 year. That means whatever you take, that will be stored in the body only up to the 25 year age. After 25 year age, there will be maintenance of the bone quality. If you are doing the good quality physiotherapy exercises and going to gym, and after 50, there is in every cases even in normal individuals. bone is going to deteriorate 90% of the peak bone mass will achieve up to the age of 18 years and in cerebral palsy there is chances of low birth weight babies that lower than normal low mineral content is compared to the older children and this chances of rickets of prematurity is there so we have got many many risk factor in that chances of osteoporosis can increase in many fold risk factor are the rickets of prematurity is infants born with low level of vitamin d low peak bone mass that is not achieved at up to the age of 25 year if they are taking treatment for the fits convulsions seizures if they have got poor nutrition difficulty taking the food less exposure to sunlight low physical activities fat and collagen infiltration of muscle so there will be impaired muscle activation if there is impaired muscle activation is there then they are going to hamper the bone quality because strain and sprain will not be there on the bone so mechanical signal is not there the bone quality will not improves these are four and five not chalne wale bachche difficulty in eating drinking solvent low weight for the age 
Immobilization is given for the long duration in fractures that all can cause increased risk of osteoporosis in these individuals. Now, come to the treatment. How you can treat it? You can treat it by the increasing the peak bone mass by taking good nutritional support including the calcium, magnesium, phosphate, vitamin D diet and minimize risk associated with movement and handling. So barrier free environment should be there everywhere at working atmosphere, at home, at street, at society. I should consider the getting the DEXA scan to know the grade of osteoporosis in children and adult visceral palsy who have history of low impact fracture if you suspect that this child can have the osteoporosis. If this osteoporosis confirm the DEXA scan, then treatment of choice is bisphosphonate therapy. Bisphosphonate is a special kind of treat medicine that can be given oral, weekly, monthly, and one injection also can once in a year. But that medicine should be taken only after the proper investigation and proper advice of the doctors. Maintenance of mobility and weight bearing is also very very important. Registered training that can increase the muscle power and walking is very very important. Standing frame have no impact on bone mineral density. So just by making a stand, a standing of the child is not going to impact the bone quality. We have good quality lecture on osteoporosis that is available on YouTube and our other channel that is Jitendra Jain Triple Line where you can get the lots of infarction osteoporosis you can go and have it. This is the uh, <coughs> link and this can also. And other lecture is also there. The bone health in cerebral palsy affected children and normal developing children. You can go through this lecture on YouTube channel and have a lots of information. Thank you.